Hello everyone and welcome to the Captain's Video Blog. We are Thursday, uh, September the 15th, 2016 and uh, it's almost 5 in the morning which means that, well, just after checking for, you know, one of my several um, inscriptions, uh, sounds weird, in a, in a university if I can do it online, uh, I will go to sleep because, well, I need, I kind of need to do a hard reset so I guess that I mean tomorrow, uh, which means kind of today, I will need to to go and and wake up um, fairly early. Which I mean, fairly early compared to today when I when I woke up at eight p.m. Um, well, not really. I woke up at four p.m. Yeah, something like that. But then my phone was almost out of battery, so I decided to to stay in my bed while it was charging. That was a wrong, you know, very very bad idea i fell asleep um so yeah at any rate it wasn't good you know waking up at 4 p.m just not great uh but yeah i kind of need to do a hard reset not like last month you know when i at one point i was so out of <laughs> of everything <laughs> that that i i actually one point at uh, one point i woke up it was midnight and uh, then i was like ha huh, fuck uh I, it wasn't even last month it was like two or three weeks ago <laughs> uh so yeah when i woke up at midnight i was like well shit i'm gonna go to, i'm gonna sleep just a bit more and i was like maybe i'll wake up in the morning and i did definitely didn't wake up in the morning so yeah uh that's something um but you know i need to to enroll in three schools uh, because my diploma needs to be validated by three schools for some reason, you know, I could very, I mean, in my head I could very much do with only one school this year because I only have to do my internship and my internship is only supervised by a professor from one school uh, and uh, the presentation at the end of the year also by the professor of one school but since the results appear on the websites of every school I guess that still uh, uh, I also need to make sure that I don't need to go to Montpellier early Saturday morning, uh, so that's gonna be tough. Um, so yeah, um, what can I say? Uh, just complicated stuff. I sent out mails uh, so that I I would know you know the extent of of what I should do. Um, but at any rate, it means that. Next week, I'm gonna need to go to Montpellier uh, once, and maybe another time later. I just don't hope that happens. I need to send out mails to tell my professor that I can do two internships. I need to send out a mail to the place I, you know, I have an agreement for the first internship to tell them, yeah, that's okay. It won't, you know, you won't need to go to Montpellier for a present for to attend my presentation because there won't be any presentation. Um, but still. Um, so far, uh, I mean, at least until the, the end of next week, I will not really be ready to start my internship. Uh, so anyway, let's talk a bit about NXT. So on NXT, a couple of interesting things. Samoa Joe took out, you know, he came with that attitude of being like a bit zen, uh, saying, yeah, I respect, uh, I respect Nakamura. I just want to tell him one thing and I won't go until I have told him this this thing and it was that he wanted his rematch as soon as he was cleared and Nakamura was said you're on and they, they shook hands and then it was like okay sure he, respe he respects him seems like he's a worthy champion and then he destroyed Nakamura uh, s you know um, threw him in the steps power bombed him on, on the on the on the steps why not sure um, just he kind of killed the the crowd because when Liv Morgan won her match against R Rochelle Fazio uh, it was fucking quiet and uh, then it looked like Liv Morgan had some kind of a death wish because she challenged Asuka uh, Corey Graves and that's when it becomes a bit, a bit, a little bit mad bad because when it's the champion herself who says yeah i don't think anyone can really be competition it's kind of a humble brag but when it's a commentator a heel commentator that 
comments on a face champ um, because Oscar is face for all that you know that matters. Um, uh, she, she did, I, I mean, he, that sounds like oh boy. Uh, <laughs> no, please don't. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I mean that was just weird for Liv Morgan to be the one, the first one that apparently apparently out of this new era of NXT to to challenge for Oscar's title. But then again, Billy Kay has been on a losing streak and definitely didn't appear last week. Uh, the, the 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 other women just aren't there, and Liv Morgan is the only one who apparently is able to make someone tap out. So yeah. Um, it, it was a, I mean, it was good knowing you, Liv Morgan. Uh, I hope you just will be able to wrestle to wrestle after uh, Asuka just steamrolled you. Um, so yeah, um, other matches include Drew Gulak and, and Hideo Itami going at it like hard-hitting match. When I say hard-hitting, there were slaps, there were kicks, violence, uh, just... Apparently now the GTS is officially uh, Hideo Itami's finisher because that's the way he ended he ended the match. I mean, um, maybe it was only that. Maybe it was because Drew Gulak was going so heavily that the the usual uh, finisher wouldn't have you know just done the trick. And then it was a little bit awkward because of course there was all the all, all the celebration. Then again. Um, um, the the segment where Nakamura had to be, to be stretched out of uh, of the NXT arena was hella long. I mean, even Corey Graves went there, which you know I felt you know maybe it was to make it more legit. But then again, you don't really need to make it more legit. Um, so yeah, uh, so while. Uh, Hideo was celebrating. I was waiting for Austin Aries to come out and you know try to kick the shit out of him like he did with Ho No Way Jose for all those weeks, but he didn't. Um, speaking about No Way Jose, he lost to Bobby Roode. Um, you know it was to be expected because Bobby Roode uh, obviously isn't going to lose for a while. I don't think he's going to lose at least until he's on a on a, you know on track for. Uh, uh, an NXT title match, or at least going at it with one of the the main eventers. Uh, those main eventers being probably Hideo Itami. At one point, it's going to it's going to need to be Itami because Itami kind of need to be to be called up. He just cannot stay down when all the suspects for the events that brought uh, his injury, like last year, are in the main roster. Uh, just how. How is it gonna work? Are you just dropping that shit? I just hope not. Um, so yeah, and obviously Austin Aries, uh, Nakamura, Samoa Joe, yeah, those are the guys that I see as main eventers. Even though Austin Aries is kind of still in a position where he is facing guys that could be top guys at one point, but <laughs> just not quite there yet. Um, so yeah. Uh, but Bobby Roode has a new finisher that's uh, like a DDT, an elevated DDT, uh, still better than the pump, hel pump handle slam. Pump handle slam. It's a bit complicated to say. Um, and the authors of Pain had a match. I mean, Pain had a match. They walked basically on um, uh, S Steve Pain, I think, and uh, s s k something Sasso, Sasso. No, not Sasso, because that's Lil Sasso who vines with the lemons. That's three years ago, Jesus Christ. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the, others, the others of Spain are kind of like uh, Nia Jax and Braun Strowman. They are strong, They there's no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, they're still not quite making waves, because they're still beating up like the low tier of uh, the NXT tag division. So, yeah. But it was a, you know, it was an entertaining um, NXT episode, and it really felt like it was more of an opener for the two-hour final of the Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, completely exceeded my expectations because my expectations were to have Zack Saber Jr. versus Kota Ibushi in the finals, 
and they weren't there. It was TJ Perkins versus Grand Metallic. Oh, that was the biggest surprise of the night. Uh, just to have it out of the way, I thought that the match, you know, between uh, Gargano and Champa and Noam Dar and uh, mm, Cedric Alexander would be kind of a breather, but there was a lot of intensity. Uh, I, th you know, at every moment I thought, oh shit, that's the point where the turn happens, and no, uh, Gargano and Champa won. So I guess that they are having um, title opportunity against the revival, which is, I think, when they are turning on one another. Oh god, I just don't want that to happen. Um, but yeah, I don't want to go too far into details with the matches of the Cruiserweight Classic because that's definitely something that should be watched because that was just great. The semi-final between uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and Grand Metallic was a nice opposition, opposition of styles between uh, a wrestler that's more technical, more submission-based, that's, uh, that's, that's Zack Sabre Jr., and a wrestler that's well, I mean, he flips everywhere. That's Grand Metallic. Um, Grand Metallic, who's going to Raw, um, anyway. Um, so yeah, it was a very interesting opposition of styles. At various points, you would think, would have thought that uh, Zack Sabre Jr. had it, but uh, Grand Metallic put him away with the, the Metallic driver. Uh, that's the first big surprise of the night. Not as big as Kota Ibushi being knocked off by uh, by T.J. Perkins, and that I guess that's the end of the rumors that see Kota Ibushi signing on, on Raw. That's a bit sad, bro. Would have loved to see Kota Ibushi in, in the WWE more often. Uh, but yeah, uh, just great match here too. I, I mean, at no point did I see Kota Ibushi lose uh, the, the match. He had to go for two Golden Star power bombs, you know, I'm not sure exactly of the the, 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 the name that he gave them, because that's essentially, you know, a last try power bomb, uh, and I, it's more of a sit out last try power, bo power bomb, which arguably makes more damage than the usual last try power, power bomb, because you accompany your your opponent, that's, you know, that kind of a thing that you learn in uh, legit martial arts, <laughs> because that still hurts. Uh, you always put more pressure when you go with uh, when you put someone down and you go with them that's the thing in in judo that's the thing i would guess in other sports um in judo that's also a measure to prevent to you know to make uh things more fluid to prevent um injuries um so yeah uh and tj perkins won by submission both matches by submission um the, the the final was fucking insane you know the, i think the the, the 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 bell had rung but still uh hunter came out triple h came out i don't know why i suddenly called him hunter he said yeah we're gonna crown the cruiserweight classic champion it's gonna be great and then he said i've got a little surprise or i mean he said something along uh, that and someone brought brought a bag and he pulled out the cruiserweight championship yep the winner of the match, therefore TJ Perkins, is going to Raw and being the, f the first uh, uh, Cruiserweight Champion of the New Era. I've, this ro this little sound was like, because I wanted to say the first ever, but not really the first ever. Um, it was an amazing match, amaz amazing sequences where TJ Perkins tried to, to keep down uh, Grand Metallic, and Grand Metallic still find, found ways to bring down TJ Perkins with so much imaginative offense, like that runner off the top rope onto the ground, like, oh shit. Now you can say whatever it's about TJ Perkins, uh, MRA and all that, but he's an amazing champion for the Cruiserweight division, and I just hope that SmackDown is ready to put on a lot, uh, a big display, because it's going to be tough if, if the Cruiserweight champion, uh, if the Cruiserweight division is only half as good. Uh, is even half as good as it was on the Cruiserweight Classic. Like, WWE knocked it out of the park. Um, hoping that Sami Zayn and Neville are part of that, because it would be good for them. Um, so yeah, uh, anyway, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow where I will have news about, you know, stuff uh, for my school life. Goodbye.